the girl Yogari and Danara had left behind to rot suddenly wakes up with the system reminding her that she doesn't have much time. She cannot comprehend what is happening as the system further informs her that she is an artificial human and they are actually a group of AI units residing inside her. According to them, Ayaka just has 30 minutes left before they stop functioning and she dies again. The AI units then urge her to choose whether she wants to die or live alongside them. Hearing all this, Ayaka refuses to die those scumbags who left her alone and with this, the system releases her limiter. Despite all this, she had sustained massive damage and to recover from that, she has no other option but to consume the dragon. Back when Yogari was still a child, Asaki Yogari used to look after him and cook for him even though she doesn't even have a rice cooker. Her cooking is so damn bad that it is barely edible, but she urges Yogari to praise her since he's a guy or else he'll never be popular among girls. Hearing all this, Yogari eats the food without complaining, commenting that it is delicious. Besides this, Asaka even has to teach him basic education even though she hasn't been paid yet. As they are studying, someone enters the home as Yogari comments that it must be the porter which is basically a robot that brings supplies to them. Asaka cannot comprehend how Yogari has gotten used to these creatures hanging around him and decides to make use of this opportunity. She instructs the robot to bring them elementary books, rice cooker, and even a dog. With this, both of them go outside as Asaka wonders if she'll be able to get back alive. After some time, Asaka's superior summons her to the research center where he appreciates her for her tenacity, further stating that they weren't expecting her to survive this long. Asaka informs him that she has taught Yogari basic knowledge, but it would be difficult teaching him further and they need more people for this task. The guy tells her that it is nearly impossible since most people usually quit after the first night and they don't know the reason behind this. Asaka then questions if she'll be locked inside forever as the researcher wonder if she's unhappy with this job with Asaka replying positively. With this, the guy brings out an envelope with Asaka's salary in it. This shocks her as she wasn't expecting such a huge amount, but realizes that she cannot do anything with this money if she's locked inside. The guy reminds her that she can take some days off and enjoy herself if she wants. This makes her wonder who will take care of Yogari, but the guy clears all her reservations and she decides to take some days off. After some time, Asaka wakes up in a mysterious room and realizes that someone must have abducted her during her vacation. At that moment, a woman reassures her that they won't harm her, asserting that they are an organization seeking to save the world by eliminating the imminent danger. Some days have passed and Yogari is worried that Asaka hasn't returned back. With no other option left, he decides to look for her and instructs the robot to show her the way outside. The robot informs him that the door can only be unlocked from the outside as Yogari threatens that researchers to open the door. This ensues massive chaos among them as Yogari can kill them even without looking at them. He eventually reaches the control room where they inform him regarding Asaka's whereabouts and that she was abducted by a certain organization. Hearing this, Yogari decides to save her on his own and urges them to keep everything that happened here a secret. Following this, Yogari eventually reaches the organization, killing everyone in his way. The higher-ups of the organization believe that Yogari cannot kill them without looking at them, but they were wrong. As soon as they think about killing him, Yogari's ability activates on its own and kills them instantly. With no other option left, one of them attempts to use Asaka as refugee and threatens Yogari. Unfortunately for her, Yogari effortlessly cast her into hell upon reuniting with Asaka who cannot comprehend what is happening. Yogari feared that Asaka might cast him aside after witnessing everything he did, but much to his surprise, she holds his hand as they head back to their home. After this, the researcher visits Asaka and informs her that she won't be able to quit now that Yogari has taken a liking to her and no one can stop him. Asaka, on the other hand, also wants to make Yogari happy and teach him different things related to life. In the present, Yogari is actually dreaming about all this with Danara keeps staring at him. Seeing this, Mokomoko comments that she should just spend her entire life with him which makes her blush. She further asserts that Yogari is quite handsome as well and is perfect to continue the Danara bloodline. Danara, however, is not sure about this since she doesn't know about Yogari's feelings. In the meantime, Yogari also wakes up as Danara informs him that they have reached the royal capital and are completely surrounded by soldiers. With no other option, they decide to confront them and explain their circumstances. Yogari reassures Danara that if things go west, he'll take care of them. The guy in charge introduces himself as Torgs and questions Yogari if they are from the Immortal Army since the vehicle belongs to them. In response to this, Yogari replies negatively and informs them that the vehicle was gifted to them by the Lord of Hanabusa, Ryota. 
He further tells him that they are sage candidates summoned by sage Sion and were told to come to the capital for the trial. Torgs proposes that they verify their abilities to ascertain their eligibility as sage candidates. Yet, even after thorough confirmation, he remains uncertain, worried that simple camouflage could be easily replicated by anyone. With no other option left, Yogari reveals the pendant granted to them by Rick and upon seeing them, Torgs and the other soldiers get on their knees. According to Torgs, this pendant belongs to the royal family's coat of arms. With this, Yogari questions if they'll let them through to which Torgs replies positively. At that moment, a cheeky-looking guy appears at the spot and challenges the credibility of the pendant. He demands them to prove that they are knights of the Divine King by flaunting their holy swords or defeat him in battle. Hearing this, Danara suggests that they back off, but Mokomoko motivates her, stating that this guy is a weakling. With no other option left, Danara decides to battle him and within a fraction of second, she defeats him by kicking him in the balls. This leaves Yogari devastated as he wasn't expecting something like this from her. Mokomoko, on the other hand, is extremely proud of her and with this, they are allowed to enter the royal capital. After walking around for some time, Danara questions the presence of armed individuals inside the capital. The cheeky guy from before informs her that these people are explorers who challenge the underworld. He further informs them that the Dark God is sealed beneath this city and its spawns appear here occasionally. This makes Danara wonder if the Dark God they encountered previously wasn't the only one out there. After this, Yogari somehow gets rid of the guy as they have to meet their classmates. Danara is freaking out, contemplating how they'll explain everything to their classmates. Yogari, on the other hand, cannot forgive them for leaving them behind. After this, they reach a massive hall where all of them are gathered as the King of Mani welcomes them. As he is addressing them, a guy interferes and arrogantly approaches the king. This infuriates him as he brings out his sword and cuts off his fingers before he could do anything. His classmates cannot comprehend what just happened because his time stop was supposed to be invincible. The king then instructs them to settle down, further asserting that they have to achieve a lot of things before becoming a sage. Now that Yogari and Danner have reached the royal capital and are finally reunited with their classmates, I wonder what will happen next. I'm pretty sure, Yogari won't forgive them for what they did to them and take his revenge. Make sure to like and subscribe, so you don't miss out on anything.